Hello my friends, my name is Steve Maneve with Steve Maneve Yacht Sales and my goal is to help you find a boat, sell your boat, and share my knowledge on anything boating. Let's get into the news. Today, we have another green day. Uh, mostly, I'd say 70% green for the marine industry with the biggest player, ya uh, Yamaha, getting 8.49 in the green percent. Okay. So even Marine Max that had a great day yesterday um, uh, didn't even have more than a point off loss. So that's really good. So two green days in a row. All right, so let's go to the news. We left off yesterday at, we got a bunch of articles today. Wow, we got a lot. Okay, um, but let's go through a lot of them. All of them. Um, look, switching gears. Mustang wasted no time altering its factory to produce gowns for healthcare workers treating COVID-19 patients. You can read about that. Um, not sure why Mustang got in there. Hmm. Okay. Um, raising awareness about EPIRBs, PLBs, and ELTs. So, ACR, which is a really big... Um, EPIRB company, uh, I'm sure once you see who they are, you'll, uh, you'll know exactly who they are. Uh, let's go into it actually. So there, I'm sure you've seen that before. Those EPIRBs right there. Um, okay, so basically, um, ACR, Artex, and Ocean Signal are teaming up to raise awareness among boaters, outdoor enthusiasts, and aviators about the benefits and responsibilities of owning an EPIRB, which is, uh, it's EPIRB stands for Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacon. Um, and PLB means Personal Locator Beacon, and ELT uh, means Emergency locator transmitter. So you can read up about that. What else we got? Updating shore power connections. So for boat owners with shore power connections, the part of uh, the part that's the biggest potential problem is the easiest to change. An outdated twist type connector. You guys know what I'm talking about. The uh, shore power cord that you would just plug in and twist a little bit. Um, they're saying that they can, uh, with a retrofit kit from Smart Plug System, it's fast and simple to upgrade to the safest and most thoroughly modern uh, 30 amp or 50 amp marine power, short, marine power supply equipment available. So uh, most boats either have like a regular extension cord looking shore power and where that you just plug in to your to a normal uh, 110 volt or you've got the 30 amp or you've got the bigger yachts have the 50 amp some boats have 230 some boats have a single 30 some boats have 50 some boats have 250s so 250s hmm yeah no 250s no maybe bigger ones but I haven't seen one with 250s. Um, so let's keep it going. So if you want to know about that, um, you can go to Smart Plug, and this is their website. And they there's a picture of it right there above me. So it looks like a like an adapter, um, and they've got a bunch of information on their website. Next, stern drive versus outboards. This I like. Um, this is a cool article. So, boatingmag.com came out with this article. And, you know, I guess, I guess it's hard to determine which one's better. Uh, some of you are just going to say, no way, outboards are better. And then some of you are going to say, no, I prefer stern drives because, I don't know, I have a Mastercraft or I like skiing and or 
I, I need that back, that back platform because it's the best part of the boat. It's where I go and sit at the sandbar and it's where everybody hangs out. It's where, um, you know, my wife puts her feet in the water while I'm in the water with the kids and it's just a nice, nice little area where you can't really have that experience with outboards. However, with the new boats that are coming out with that side platform, um, then you kind of have that same experience and you can still have outboards. So I think people know that and they are, um, the boat manufacturers are doing those side platforms with outboards. Um, so anyways, they go into a lot of stuff here. And so the uh, Aviada, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, they, they, it looks like they test that boat. Um, they talk about the power. They talk about the difference between the outboards and the stern drives. They talk about price. They talk about um, the transom, the, probably the benefits. And like, this is what I was talking about. Look, I mean, without outboards, Imagine that at the sandbar. I mean, you're ha it's like really, really nice to have that back piece. So, I mean, some people, some people want that. Um, they talk about the space. They talk about the speed. They talk about the, um, you know, fuel economy. Uh, they talk about the size, the visibility the maintenance which is big i think outboards are gonna win that one they talk about maintenance like another section about maintenance it looks like they talk about winterizing uh another part another uh <laughs> maintenance section they talk about resale um i think in outboards are better on resale probably because you can swap them out really easy once they get older uh skinny water shifting they got some charts i love charts sound and basically their um their results and it says price speed and economy uh difference differences were uh ne negligible if you want a transom for water play, the smart move is to get the stern drive. Yeah, like well, Mastercraft and you want that. You want to be able to jump on, jump off with when you're getting pulled in, um, when you're like doing wakeboarding and skiing. If you want better corrosion resistance and easier maintenance, plus drives that can be trimmed clear out of the water go for the outboards um and then they say with the avaria you can have both choices so maybe maybe they wrote the whole article because of them so that's that i like that maybe i'll do an art there there's a good there's a um there's a youtube guy called Born Again Boating, that he did a uh, uh, what's better one or two outboards. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a reaction video on that one, I think. Um, it just reminded me because outboards versus stern drives. So maybe we'll do a reaction video on his one outboard versus two outboards. So anyways, look out for that in the future. Um, so this article is about a webinar, mobile satellite communications company uh, is joining. They're having a webinar, so that's cybersecurity. Uh, outdoor industry hosts webinar in thriving and chaotic times. Uh, it's just an article about how they're responding and um, what they're doing. Same thing with this article. NMMA compiles answers to COVID-19 webinar questions. So they had a webinar last Friday and they have questions answered. Um, Yamaha announces further coronavirus related furloughs and staff reductions. 
So you can read about that. CETO Foundation opens nomination for North American Sober Skipper Advisory Council. You can read up on that. Um, Yanmar establishes new marine company in Asia. So um, it's to support growth of the company's marine business. The company will be responsible for the development and production of boats and marine equipment and plans to expand its activities to development, production, and sales and service of marine engines and propulsion. Hmm. Um, take action now. Not every dealer will survive the impacts of the coronavirus pandemic, but the ones that do will come into um, this time with low debt, strong inventory management skills, a solid team, decent cash reserves, and a plan to weather a long, longer downturn. So you can read up on that. That article is called Take Action Now. Um, there's another one about uh, the UK builder Fairline Yachts said it named Steve Lison, sales manager for the Americas. Congratulations. Um, Mexico's Gold Coast Cruising Guide. If you want to know about that, they talk about um, Mexico's Gold Coast, 475 nautical miles. That's how long it is um, from this city to, to Acapulco. And if you want to know about that, you can read it. Hitting close to home. Um, so this general manager of Allen Harbor Marine Service in Massachusetts uh, has been operating since 1927. Like so many dealers, is facing a challenging a challenge he never, never fathomed. So, uh, with the, in the midst of this global pandemic, you can read up about that. It looks like somebody else wrote about the Yamaha uh, uh, workforce changes. Um, so Brabus 500 Shadow, this is cool. Uh, the Finnish builder has only one request, take their rocket ship like cruisers for a spin. Uh, so that article seems interesting. I found a um, a video about that boat, so let's listen to it. Join me at the helm of the Brabus Shadow 500, and we've been tasked with the job of delivering it from Poole to Southampton, Swanwick Marina, specifically for the British Motor Yacht Show. And we're going to get straight into the driving experience because for all intents and purposes, the layout, the practicality is exactly the same as the Axopar 28 on which it is based. The deck layout is exactly the same. It is as practical as the Axopar 28. You have a toilet, you have a wet bar, or a cabin aft, but there's a key difference, and that is the influence of Brabus, who have sparkled their fairy dust all over it. So you have carbon fiber all over the place. You have upgraded cool. materials here, like this lovely red leather. You have the Brabus badge pretty much anywhere you're looking. It is around 100 kilograms lighter than the Axopar, and crucially, whereas the Axopar has a maximum horsepower of 400, this has got a pair of 250 horsepower so, Mercury like V8s. Eddie Bauer, AMG, yeah. and that makes a difference. Whatever the addition. The shadow feels like uh, a driver's uh, Bra uh, Brabus, the moment you um, slot yourself in this cocoon of a hand Axel position. You sit nice and low. And so you have six forward-facing seats, all protected by this wonderful windscreen. The steering Look wheel. Look at that steering wheel. A work of genius. I don't know why everyone doesn't do this. You have key controls right under your thumbs here. The hub stays still. The wheel moves around it. You have the chin tabs here. Like you have the thrusters. A you also have lot. the control That's for the awesome. audio down the this side. Wheel. Of course, a lot of stuff is inside the screens that you have wow, here. Wow, everybody should but do that. But you also have soft keys on top of the dash for stuff that you're going to use regularly, like the wipers, bow thruster, and the uh, bilge pump, things like that. What's really nice as well is that it's just as comfortable to sit or stand. I'm bolstered now, this is a great position, but if you want a bit more protection, then you can easily sit down and have even further protection from this windscreen. 
If I was to criticise one thing, it would be that for a reason I can't fathom, they've moved the steering wheel so it's slightly off centre, so you find yourself slightly twisted when you're sitting down like this. Mm -hmm. You have the trim panel here, tell. the active trim for the Mercury outboards. That should really be this side, and then they could move the wheel over a bit so that it all is... Active trim, you guys know what that is? So when you have a Mercury, it's Mercury's uh, option, active trim, basically. So you know how when you're driving and you're um, trimming the engines up and down? Um, some of you don't even do it, but the ones that do, it's so that you can get better fuel economy, um, better performance on the boat, uh, a little bit more horsepower, I'm, I'm sorry, a little bit more speed. So let's say you're going 20 miles an hour uh, to 25 miles an hour, depending on the boat you have and the engines, you can start trimming it up. You get on plane, you, maybe at cruise, you trim it up maybe 25% up. I'm talking, when I'm saying trim, I mean the outboard. Uh, you know how you've seen outboards, you know, they go up the engine. So that's what I'm talking about when that trim, not the trim tabs. I don't want, I, I'm talking to new boaters, not, the guys that know you guys are like what are you talking about of course i know what you're talking about i'm talking about the i'm talking to the new boaters so an outboard uh when you trim at the throttle there's always a button when you trim the outboards you press it and the outboards come up you know you that i'm sure you've seen well when you're driving a boat and you're and you decide to trim the engines up a little bit it's because you are trying to find that right spot where the angle is helping the performance of the boat. I can get into it more, but maybe I should do another video on trimming. Uh, well, maybe we'll find one and we'll react to it. Um, but basically, that's trimming an engine to get that. Now, if you don't want to think of that and you want it to be automatic, Mercury came out with active trim and active trim, basically you just press the button, it turns on, and it does the trimming for you. So, as soon as you start gaining speed, it knows what RPMs you're at, and it trims the engines so that you don't have to think and you get maximum performance and fuel efficiency and blah, blah. And when you're turning, like if you're turning at high speeds, it will even trim up and down. Now, a lot of you don't even do that manually. Maybe some of you, oh, of course I do it. No, not everybody does it, trust me. When you're making turns like that, you're not trimming it. I know you're not trimming it because it really only takes a few seconds. But the computer of an active trim will do that for you so that you get better fuel efficiency and performance. At the end of the day, it, it gives you better fuel economy than us who are probably not trimming it when we're doing those turns. Now, does it make a big difference? Not, not really. I mean, you probably won't even notice it in your, in, your, in your bills, like in your gas bills, but it does help. And that's what technology is all about, right? Okay, so that's what active trim is and that's what he's talking about. Let's go back. Into it. More natural. But that aside, you can and then what he's saying right now is about the steering wheel is a little bit off. Yeah, like I could even tell a little bit that it's off. And he's saying if they would have, if they could just move this active trim to the other side, maybe they would have been able to do it. I don't know. Like, I think they may have thought about that. My guess is that that's where that steering wheel had to go they probably noticed that and they're like we're not going to spend any more money or time to move it um that's the one thing and and then they said and they weren't able to get the the helm seat moved a little bit or they're probably like um um when uh, when Bra uh when when brabus got involved and they probably switched the seats they used seats that were probably off a little bit and then they didn't want to go back and fix it. I don't know, could be that. If you want to comment below, you can. That's my opinion. And that's my opinion. Moves along extremely comfortably. 
and that is exactly what this boat is designed for covering distances at speed we're only cruising at 20 knots an hour and using 43 litres an hour but we were coming into the Solent we were cruising at 40 knots comfortably doing about 100 litres an hour and at that speed you can hoover up so much ground and it's absolutely effortless you can all sit in this fantastic cockpit talk to each other you don't have to raise your voice and it'll just go and go even when it chops up a bit at top speed we've got 52 knots today and I've no doubt if you had a few more fluid few less fluids on board and played with the trim you'd be getting 55 but it did 52 knots today easily it's not just a straight line machine either it is ferocious in the corners you can really throw it into fast hard turns and there's very little loss of grip it grips super super hard whips you around and fires back out the hole there's so much punch from these engines mercury have done a phenomenal job with these 250 v8s they're smooth they're powerful but there's a real whack in the kidneys every time you shove the throttles forward whether it's from a standing start well, if you can get 300 range, or right towards the top at 6000 rpm this boat hasn't forgotten its practical roots it still has the element of depth part 28 that make that boat so good so you have the wet bar arms or a I can't hear you it's not me. Loads of deck storage, be it for the life raft, luggage, or the dedicated spaces at the stern for the fenders and lines. He's talking about so all the, the space. The day, very comfortable. But it's not until you get behind the helm that you really begin to understand what this boat is about. Yes, the handling is great, performance is searing, but it's the way that you can cover ground at high speed in real comfort that sets the Brabus Shadow 500. So his favorite thing he's saying is that he likes the fact that at high speeds, um, it just feels really, really comfortable. Okay, good. And that was by Boater, Moat, and Yachting, MBY.com. Go to it if you want. All this free publicity. Okay, what else we got here? There's just so many. Uh, there's so many more articles. Okay, let's go through them. The beauty of wireless headsets. Okay, go to it, read it. But um, I have seen firsthand um, captain and crew using headsets similar to this. And it is so helpful for them. Um, because think about it. You've got the captain there. And he's not yelling. And he's not... Look crew they've got it either sh here and they've got to touch it and grab it and talk through it when you've got a headset you've got your hands free and you can get the lines get the fenders talk on it um so yeah but i'm sure they're gonna say even more stuff the other day we talked about sentiment we talked about the retail the marine retailer sentiment and we saw the chart up until april and it was going up so what did, what did we see we saw actually we saw it up to here yeah we saw it up to here and now we've got the rest of it and it looked like it was going up, but now, unfortunately, it dropped like a rock. Um, but I wouldn't be discouraged. I mean, everything dropped like a rock. So don't worry. It's going to go back up. Um, and if anything, right now is the best time to think about your next move. So brokers, dealers, you don't have to listen to me, but... Um, my take is that right now is the best time to just kind of have a meeting of the minds and think of your next move. I'm sure you're all doing it. I'm sure that um, with the time that we're getting being at home or just kind of not having all these little fires to put out, you're thinking of the next best thing, your next move that's going to help you out. You see the 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 panic you you see everything so it you're you're i'm hoping that you have a clear mind meditate if you have to i don't care but think about your next move don't go watching netflix 
<laughs> think of your next move. I'm thinking of my next move. For show. Okay. Next. Smooth the ride. What is this about? How a boat handles in rough water depends in large part on its hull design. Here's a look at um, uh, the capabilities and limitations of three basic forms of mono hulls. I gotta admit, I did not even notice all these here. So we're, <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even skim through these. So let's look at them together. Um, usually, I kind of go. Usually what I do is like I, I go into it, I see if there's any brands, I open the brand up and I just have it ready. Um, in this case, um, looks like they're talking about all this advertising. Next time I'm gonna get all this advertising out of the way. Look at that, bras. Okay, planing holes. They talk about planing holes, I like that. They talk about stepped holes, which I'm a big fan of stepped holes. Um, and they talk about, oh, hold on, three. We missed one. Stepped holes, planing holes, semi planing holes. Okay. So, anyways, go in there. Um, okay. The experimental leader, boating industry video chat. What does it mean to be an experimental leader during the COVID-19 crisis? I don't know. What should you be spending your time on right now? How can you use these tough times to reinvent and rethink your business? That's exactly what I just said like five, like two minutes ago. Um, so, boating industry video chat. I mean, what are they talking about here? David Gee. It's a very short article. Um, in the Boat in Industry Insider, editor in chief and content director David Gee video chats with author and speaker, uh, blah, blah, experimental leader, be new, be a new kind of boss to cultivate an organization un of innovators. Look, if you're curious, go check it out. I don't know exactly what they're talking about. On board the uh, oh cruisers, let's go to it. Let's go to it. Give me one second. I'm sorry, I was not prepared here. Okay, let's see. Let's go over this one. Okay, so that article, Cruisers has a new outboard powered 38 GLS with a 46 knot top speed and an eye towered entertainment, uh, an eye toward entertainment, sorry. The font when I look down is so small sometimes I can't read. <laughs> okay, uh, so they're talking about this boat here. The 38 GLS. I like uh, I like the layout back here. I like when there's an L shape or a U shape seating. Um, usually everybody does that. Ooh, a, a, a video. Let's see how long you are. Four minutes. I don't know. Let's try it. Cruiser's Yacht's 38 GLS is an outstanding express yacht. Over the past few days, we've motored to a few favorite local restaurants, spent a day on the sand paddleboarding, kayaking, and diving, nice entertained boat. friends and family dockside, and cruised across Lake Michigan at speeds up to 50 miles per hour. And the Beach Door provides water sport enthusiasts with a much higher level of access Everybody to the water. Everybody calls that platform different stuff. They call that one the beach door. I wonder what the true, what, what it'll be called in like a year or two. I'm sure everybody's gonna have to call it the same thing. Like dive door. What's that called? Your boating Everybody calls it different. starts with this extra roomy bow with a built-in table that converts to this very relaxing sun pad. 
an optional sunshade attaches from the front that of the bow to the That sunshade's a little loose there, but it's very it's fine. easy to assemble. Hideaway cup holders. Mm, I like hideaway cup holders. An anchor locker. Great. And Rockford Fosgate speakers with custom Rockford stainless steel grills Fosgate. complete the features on the bow. Moving through an easy opening port side door to the helm and entertainment spaces, you'll find luxury amenities everywhere. Stainless bar stools that swivel, a sink, raised solid surface bar, optional grill. I like the raised large storage cabinet, surface bar. Refrigerator. I was gonna pause it. Let's just keep going. Built-in cooler with drain. Hardtop with opening canvas sunroof. Let's see how much she struggles. Zero. Nice. And. Abundant lounge seating with storage underneath. Complete the port side features. Moving starboard, you'll find pure adrenaline. The that helmet is like a nice clean with helm. a Simurad electronics cluster with joystick control. A bolstered helm chair, custom tilt steering wheel, and conductive smartphone charging station create a comfortable Ooh, and functional I like that. command center. Perhaps the coolest feature on the 38 GLS is this beach, beach door. door. <laughs> the beach door. I like that name. With the door extended outward, it creates a wraparound transom that offers unprecedented access to the water. Combine the beach door with a transom shower. And concealed swim ladder, and you can see why water sports enthusiasts joke, are raving about this smart design. It's functional and efficient. Moving below deck through this sliding glass door with a screen is comfortable. Grab bars are in just the right places. The cabin features a large berth that converts to a dinette with the full bean berth positioned at refrigerator. I'm laughing because microwave. she did a good job. They're doing a good job we'll at presenting it. It's like shower. really professional, you know, like Optional TV. it's a little too professional almost. System. All within a space that boasts over six feet, it's five nice. inches of headroom. The 38 GLS sparked my imagination in so they many ways. They caught the bird in the background. The versatility and ride performance are outstanding. Contact your nearest cruiser yacht dealership. I'll to contact them. We'll see you on the water. Ooh, you've earned it. All right, that was fun. I'm glad we saw it. Oh, okay. Let's get out of this. Let's get out of there. And let's go back. So. If you want to know more about it, they've got a bunch of pictures. These pictures look good. Um, they spent some time on the marketing. I'm glad. Ooh, they've got, that looks nice. Some sure shade. I like that. I like it. Everybody should do it. Everybody should do it. I want to see that. I want to see that on every single boat and model in 2021. You have to do it, everybody. Their helm was looking clean, like there's something kind of clean about it. Those screens, I would have loved to see a little bit bigger screens, but that's fine. It's just, look, when you have, when you have a dashboard, you wanna maximize the dashboard. And I think for resale, it just looks better, you know? Like when you come in, when you put a small screen on a big dashboard, it's like floating in there. Make it bigger. It, it's, all, <laughs> it's already an expensive boat, whatever it is. You might as well spring for the bigger screens. I'm sorry, you should. Um, but nonetheless overall this is a nice boat i like i like the black hardtop reminds me of that uh that land rover look that is kind of 
not in style as much anymore, but a few years ago, that black and white Land Rover look was so cool to me. Anyways, next. Anthem Marine creates boating industry hub for federal disaster assistance. Great job, Anthem. Um, great job. Okay. Hotspot, Eden Rock, St. Barts. Gets a new spa as part of major overhaul. Well, you can read up on that. World Cat, oh, another boat. I should have been prepared. I was not prepared. I didn't know that these articles came in at the very end. But that's okay. That is okay. That's why we are quick. We are quick. We are quick. And that was that was good. Okay. This is this is what they're talking about. So that article, if you want to read that article, read it but this is what they're talking about um, some boats try to do many things and fail at everything not everything <laughs> what what boat fails at everything come on david <laughs> um, the new world cat 400 dcx takes on a multitude uh continue reading okay you can read if you want. Instead, we're going to go straight to the source. And the source is worldcat.com. This is the boat. If they have a video, we should check it out. Wow, we're already 36 minutes in. No way. All right. Nobody's going to watch this. Who's watching this? Uh, 398 12 8 beam um, it's a nice boat world cats nice like world people underestimate world cat but if you know about world cat you know they're good like people like them look it's their newest flagship It's a revolutionary model this game-changing dual console is the most stunning boat in its class luxurious appointments Abundant storage and unmatched catamaran performance. Learn more about this exciting addition to our fleet. Okay. Um, I don't see any videos, but I'm sure there is. Maybe we'll do a reaction in the future. Let's let's keep it going. Whoa. What was that? Okay, next. And the last smart propeller? What? I should have read this beforehand. I want to know about the smart propeller. Shero Engineering has a new propeller that could very well be a boom for fuel savings. We're going to read this now together. Uh, look at that. Can I get... All these ads. Get away. Get away ads. The shower propeller is reported, reportedly 9% to 15% more efficient than a standard. Um, what? Wow. Is that an ad? It's an ad. Jeez. Sorry. Okay, so look at this. Um, the propeller is said to yield a stronger and more rigid f uh, form factor than traditional wheels offer. We've hit logs, rocks, weeds, debris, sandbars. We even hit a buoy once. And we've never damaged the prop or lower unit other than cosmetic scratches, says the CEO. Okay. I want to know more. 
I want to know more. I want to know more. I want to know more. I want to know more. This is the website of this propeller that is supposedly a game changer. Move faster, handle better, pump less gas. Huh. Maybe we maybe we do a reaction video on this alone cuz we're already we're already at 40 minutes. Wow. Okay. Go to shadow uh .com. You can read up on it. It sounds really really cool. Um I need to read up on this more. Oh, 14 minutes about this. We're going to have to do a a reaction video. But this sounds cool. It's the propulsion revolution. Okay. So that's good for now. That's the news for now. Hold on. I got so many things up. Everything's lagging. Okay. I think that's better. Turn some of this stuff off. Okay. Thank you. I know it, it was long. It's like 40 minutes. Uh, my name is Steve Maniv with Steve Maniv Yacht Sales and my goal is to help you find a boat, sell your boat, and share my knowledge on anything boating. You can always connect with me through phone, email, or any of my social media channels. I'll see you on the water. You have earned it. Wow, that was long. We need to cut those to like under 20 minutes. I would like even 10 minutes. <laughs>